Hi there, I'm Jeff Lenton, one of the staff pastors here at Central. And thank you for joining us for these uh, 21 days of 555. And today I have a passage of scripture found in Mark that I want to share with you. And then uh, another thought to just share and hopefully build your faith uh, to expect God to do some great things in your life and in the lives of your family and friends over this next year. The passage is found in Mark chapter 2. And I'll begin reading at verse number two. <clears throat> it says, Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. <clears throat> While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. My challenge to you in this new year is how far are you willing to go to see God do the miraculous in your life and in the lives of your friends and family? For this man, it all was contingent upon four friends having the faith to take him from the place where he was and bring him to Jesus. And along that journey, there were obstacles. The main obstacle was that there were so many people surrounding Jesus that they couldn't get near him. So they went to great measures to take him up on the roof, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, to take him up on the roof. And while they were on the roof, they dug through the roof. And then they lowered the man in front of Jesus. And because of their faith, Jesus says, he forgave the man his sins, which is probably the greatest miracle that can happen, that we find new life in Christ through the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus. But then he took it even one step further. He not only recognized the spiritual need that was there, but he also saw the physical need that was present in the man's life. And so he said, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And immediately the man was able to jump to his feet and pick up his mat, and he walked through the crowd, and they were amazed. As I read this story again this week, I was reminded of a time in my childhood when I was sitting in a church service. Uh, my dad was the pastor of the church, and I was sitting in the church service <clears throat> as, a, as a young child, and there was a, a young man that was attending our church. I uh, knew him well. Uh, his name was Pete. He was a Vietnam veteran, and while in Vietnam, he was in the proximity of a landmine that went off, and when it went off, it caused him to be paralyzed from his waist down, and the only way that he could get around was with those uh, crutches. They called them forearm crutches that attached to your arm, your hand went in them, and he would swing himself back and forth as he was able to make his way around. And one evening, on a Sunday evening, this is back in the day when we still had Sunday evening services, uh, at the conclusion of the service there was an altar call made and people gathered around the altar just to seek God. And I remember sitting there and I could hear Pete praying. I was sitting on the front row because my mom was playing the piano uh, during the, uh, the prayer time. 
and I needed to be close to mom because that was the rule. And as I'm sitting there listening to Pete pray, I, I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but there was a moment in that prayer when Pete, who was on his knees, just, he fell straight over. Uh, <coughs> when he fell, uh, God must have done something, well, not must have, God did something very miraculous in his, in his body because in a moment, Pete jumped to his feet, he threw those crutches off to the side, and he began to sprint around the perimeter of the inside of that building. And I remember, as a child, sitting there completely amazed at what was happening because I had seen this young man on multiple occasions. It, it was like every service, Pete was there. And I, I remember seeing the struggle that he had being able to get into the building, uh, to, to be there, to worship God, to hear God's word, to have his faith built. And on that moment, I don't know why it was that moment, and I can't say that I've ever seen anything like that since, and I don't want to lock God into doing things a certain way, but on that moment, when Pete jumped to his feet, he was completely healed. I, my dad stayed at that church for a few more years after that, before transferring to another uh, place of ministry, and I remember seeing Pete every week. No longer was he walking into that place with crutches, but he was walking in under the power of his own two legs, being able to carry him in. Not only that, he was able to live a normal life just like everyone else. He was able to go back to work and do the normal things of creating or, or working to create income for his family to sustain them. It was a complete miracle of God in that moment. Now, in this story, Pete had the faith for himself to be able to ask God to do the miraculous in his body, and God did just that, and Pete was able to walk. But maybe there are friends or family members that don't yet have that faith in Christ to be able to express that or even know how to ask or respond in a way that they too could experience the miracle power of Christ in their life. The greatest miracle that anyone can have is that their sin, sin is forgiven and that they stand as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Well, maybe it's you that have the opportunity to have that faith, to create an avenue for them to come to meet Jesus face to face for themselves. Have their sins forgiven. Maybe there's a physical need that's in their body, and as you're listening to this, your faith is beginning to stir and build and say, I know that one person, I know those couple of people that need to have a miraculous intervention from God today to bring healing into their body, to bring restoration to their soul. You're the conduit for them to create a pathway so that they can get to Jesus. How far? Are you willing to go to create that avenue and pathway to Christ so that they too can experience the miracle power of Christ in their lives? Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you today for these that are watching uh, this brief message today. I ask that you would build their faith, that you would stir within them the great hope that they have in you that they would come expecting of you. And God, that you would show them those individuals that they need to have influence over to bring to you so that you can work in their lives as well. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing in this church and through the people of this church. I pray that your power and your, your mighty hand would be upon each one of them. Build their faith today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.